Sprocket goes to scary extremes to catch a creepy cat burglar on today's Miami Vice. Shadow in the Dark was directed by Christopher Crowe and was written by Chuck Adamson, who wrote a handful of other episodes, including season one's The Home Invaders, which this episode strongly resembles in story, tone, and theme. And that's a good thing. The Home Invaders is a very good episode, and this one is even better. In an eerie opening sequence set to Brian Eno's Two Rapid Formations, a man walks in the middle of the street uh, across a drawbridge at night, then circles a the house while making strange grunting noises. He creeps into a bedroom where a couple lies asleep and silently observes them, then heads to their kitchen, where he raids their fridge for raw meat and paints his face with flour. There's been a string of these non-violent yet highly disturbing break-ins recently in which a home invader will enter the house and scribble on the walls in lipstick and steal trousers without waking anyone. I feel like someone should tell Crockett he shouldn't lick things he finds at crime scenes. The vice detectives team up with the burglary division, which is headed up by the very high-strung and easily agitated Lieutenant Gilmore, played by Jack Thibault. Tubbs and Crockett do their best to try to sort through old cases in search of clues, but Gilmore is impossible to work with. Exhausted and strung out from working on the case, he blows up at them and openly resents their presence. In a splendidly unhinged scene set at a cafe while Tierra Dura by Ruben Vlades plays, Gilmore bursts in on Crockett and Tubbs and wordlessly delivers a letter in a sealed envelope about how much he dislikes having to work with them, which is some grade school level pettiness. Crockett and Tubbs visit George, a wheelchair-bound former cat burglar played by Timothy Carhart, whom Crockett had busted a while back and who used to have a similar MO to the present cat burglar. Even though George is clearly not the culprit, Gilmore loses his temper and roughs him up and ends up being removed from the case. When Crockett and Tubbs respond to a report of a break-in, they find Gilmore holed up in a stranger's kitchen, firing a gun at the freezer where he claims he's trapped the cat burglar. He hasn't. He's just lost his grip on reality, and he ends up being committed to a psych ward. With Gilmore off the case, Crockett grows obsessive. He stays up all night and tries to see patterns in the homes the cat burglar targets and in the drawings he leaves at the crime scenes. His behavior even starts to creep out Castillo, who is not easily spooked. This is the first, yet not the last, time in the series that we will see Crockett become unraveled, and it's genuinely scary. Don Johnson is always a very fine actor, but he's really, really great at being creepy. Crockett's whole personality changes in this episode, and it's super effective. The cat burglar strikes another home. This time the occupant is awake, and he attacks and terrorizes her. Crockett and Tubbs visit her in the hospital. Crockett, who is typically very respectful of victim boundaries, pushes her hard for details about her attacker, and she goes all to pieces. Crockett continues to descend into madness, and before you know it, he's rubbing flour on his face to get into the mind of the cat burglar, and he's having nightmares about being attacked by shadowy creatures. Throughout all this, Tubbs is patient and supportive, but concerned. Soon burglary arrests a suspect, but Crockett refuses to believe they've got the right guy, especially after he learns that Gilmore, who is catatonic in the psych ward after his breakdown, received a lipstick drawing from the cat burglar after the arrest of the suspect. Captain Cahill, who's played by character actor Ed Lauder, considers the case closed. He refuses to open it even after Crockett has a gigantic tantrum about it. Castillo pulls Crockett from active duty and tells Tubbs to watch over him. Crockett refuses to stop working on the case, and by getting into the mind of the cat burglar, he's able to predict which home will be targeted next. A catatonic Gilmore agrees with Crockett's hunch, and Castillo gives Crockett the go-ahead to proceed. Crockett and Tubbs arrive at the home to find an attack in progress. Crockett beats up and arrests the cat burglar, and then has to convince the homeowner that he's not the crazy one. Even with the case solved, he still has creepy nightmares about the cat burglar. This is a great little horror film of an episode. Miami Vice is often creepy, but this is one of the rare episodes that's downright scary. It's also very well made. Not only does it seem like a first or second season episode, it seems like a really good first or second season episode. It goes back to the Miami Vice style I vastly prefer, where there's no attempt to tell a grounded traditional story about realistic police work. Instead, it's all about Crockett trying to make sense of things that make no sense, and almost losing his sanity in the process. On its own merits, the story is ridiculous. Getting into the mind of an insane criminal makes cops go insane, but it works brilliantly here. In large part, that's because there's no attempt to give a coherent explanation for what's going on, because the explanation doesn't matter. It's almost supernatural the way Crockett finds out how to think like the cat burglar, and that's a large part of what makes this episode so atmospheric and successful. It also provides an eerie little preview of what will happen to Crockett at the end of season four and into season five. 
I'd said back in my review of Payback last season that I thought Payback would be our last Five Flamingo episode for a while, and I was wrong. I'm giving this one the full five birds. Next episode features Willie Nelson and Steve Buscemi. And if you're not interested in seeing it just based on that cast, then you and I probably can't be friends. But please hit subscribe to be the first to find out about new videos, and I'll see you here later.